Columbus legacy, the Koreans. A middle-class migration. Korean vendors are a familiar sight on street corners and at farmers' markets throughout the cities of Pennsylvania. This is a common image many Americans have of their Korean-American neighbors, but it is an image which belies the true uniqueness and complexity of this immigrant community. Recent surveys reveal that more than half, perhaps three out of four, Koreans in Philadelphia are self-employed. They operate small businesses such as fruit stands, groceries, dry cleaners, floral shops, and camera stores. Their businesses have revitalized old neighborhoods like Olney, Logan, and Cheltenham. If not self-employed, Koreans are most likely to be highly skilled professionals. They are physicians, surgeons, chemists, nurses, social workers, mathematicians, and musicians. What makes Korean immigration so unique, so different from other migrations of the past and present, is that it is a middle-class migration. Before they came to America, these self-employed shopkeepers were most likely professionals with good educations and many skills. They come to cities like Philadelphia to pursue their own version of the American dream. The Choi family runs a cleaning business at two locations in Philadelphia. Michael Choi runs one store for his father, who was an engineer in Korea. I decided to bring in my family in the United States because better future my job, better future my kids' education, better future more, uh, better lifestyle. The Choi family came in 1970 after changes in U.S. immigration law during the 60s made it possible for Koreans and other Asians to immigrate to the United States. The new legislation removed racial barriers dating back to the 1920s that prevented Asians, Africans, and many Southern and Eastern Europeans from coming to the country. The new legislation gave preference to relatives of American citizens and to people with skills and professions. Korean nurses, for example, who were sorely needed by American hospitals. Despite their professional backgrounds, many Koreans prefer to run their own businesses. In this way, they can preserve their independence, rely on family members for support, and, they believe, achieve greater financial security for their children. Entrepreneurship is something that I always admire. Observing my father's success in small business uh, enlightened me and using what I have learned in college as well as the freedom of operating a small business suit my personality. The Choi's who came 20 years ago arrived with very little capital and because they were legal immigrants, received no government aid or support. But they were determined to succeed. They relied on traditional values of hard work, 12 to 15 hour days, six days a week, and family support. To raise capital, many Koreans rely on a Kai or Korean credit union. In spirit, the Kai is like this community garden in North Philadelphia. In the garden, members pool their efforts to raise vegetables. In a Kai, Koreans pool their money to raise capital. Eventually, each member is entitled to a loan from the Kai, just as a gardener is entitled to a harvest. Their common philosophy is the sum of small parts can make one great thing. In addition to traditional values and unique institutions, Koreans rely on their churches. The vast majority are Christians, although a few still follow traditional Asian religions. In 1970, there were only two Korean churches in Philadelphia. Today, there are more than 100, serving a population greater than 50,000. Most are Presbyterian, but a few are Methodist or Catholic. <laughs> 
Father, we thank you again this wonderful ceremony. The church is a spiritual institution, a social center, and a place where a family like the Choi's can have a voice in the affairs of their community. It is an important place where people can exchange information about jobs, business matters, and news from home. The churches are the lifeblood of the Korean community. Through their churches and other organizations, businessmen like the Choi's, as well as physicians and other professionals, provide leadership for the Korean community. Together they work to solve the problems or meet the needs of their people. Always it is in the spirit of, the sum of small parts can make one great thing. In 1975, for example, community leaders founded the Philip Jason Memorial Foundation and Medical Center. They wanted to provide the hard-working, self-employed business community, as well as other Koreans, with much-needed, low-cost health and medical care. The medical center operates as a client of an HMO, or health maintenance organization, and therefore gets group rates for medical insurance. Today, the Jason Center serves not only the Korean community, but other Americans as well. It is fitting that the center should be named after So Jai Peel or Philip Jason. A 19th century Korean immigrant, Philip Jason settled in southeastern Pennsylvania. He was the first Korean to become a naturalized citizen and to graduate from a U.S. medical school in 1892. He remains a role model for Philadelphia's Koreans. For many, he embodies the American dream through hard work determination and education, he achieved honor and respect for his family and community. Me and my wife both feel that education is very important to my son because it would allow him to achieve his goal, whether his goal will be to become a banker or a president or even a small businessman like myself. I think better education to a more better future. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.